Greetings, learners. This is your Kenyan teacher. It is our pleasure to continue with our series called The Chemistry of Gases. In this video, we present the laboratory preparation procedures and uses of gases that are taught at Form 2. Welcome and stay on until the end. Gases discussed in Form 2 include carbon 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide. We shall begin our presentation with lab preparation and uses of carbon 2 oxide followed by carbon 4 oxide. For carbon 2 oxide, we have about four methods that can be used to obtain the gas. The first one involves dehydration of methanoic acid. So we are saying that dehydration is the process of removing water of crystallization from compounds that contain the same. Compounds that contain water of crystallization are usually said to be hydrated. Dehydration may also mean removal of elements of water, that is hydrogen and oxygen, in the ratio 2 to 1. And this is from compounds that do not contain water of crystallization. During preparation of carbon 2 oxide, our common dehydrating agent is usually sulfuric 6 acid in concentrated form. Let us see how this is done in a laboratory setup. So here we are. We shall have our methanoic acid in a conical flask into which we shall introduce our concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. This dehydrates the acid, methanoic acid, to produce carbon 2 oxide, which shall then be collected over water. The equation for the reaction is as follows. HCOOH -H is our methanoic acid. We are using concentrated sulfuric 6 acid to remove the elements of water in a process that we have just called dehydration. So you shall produce your carbon dioxide gas and water will be lost. So this setup gives a wet sample of carbon to oxide. If in any case we need a dry sample, then we are supposed to pass the gas through concentrated sulfuric 6 acid from this end and then we shall collect the dry sample by upward delivery. We use upward delivery because carbon 2 oxide is slightly lighter than air. Now if we don't use methanoic acid, we have a second method of preparing carbon 2 oxide where we react sodium methanoate with concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. So when we use sodium methanoate, we first produce methanoic acid from the reaction between sodium methanoate and concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. This methanoic acid is then dehydrated by the same acid to produce carbon 2 oxide. So the setup is as follows. We have concentrated sulfuric acid, 
being delivered by the dropping funnel, sodium methanoate in our flat bottomed flask, then we have some potassium hydroxide here before we collect the gas over water. This solution of alkali is to remove traces of carbon 4 oxide which may be present as we carry out our experiment. Now, for the equation, this is going to be a two-step reaction. So in the first case, our sodium methanoate with that formula is reacting with concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. We shall produce methanoic acid. There we are. This time the state will be aqueous and we shall have sodium hydrogen sulfate being produced as well. Now the moment we form our methanoic acid, then our concentrated sulfuric 6 acid will dehydrate it and we end up forming our gas carbon 2 oxide and water. So that becomes our two-step reaction for method two. For method three, we may obtain carbon two oxide again by dehydrating what we call ethan dioic acid, commonly called oxalic acid. Let us look at the setup for our third method. So our method three is dehydration of ethan dioic acid. Ethan dioic acid has the structure that looks like this. This is ethan dioic acid. That is how it looks like structurally. So if we remove elements of water in the ratio 2 is to 1, I'll get rid of the first hydrogen atom and the OH here will also be removed. The ratio of elements of water is 2 is to 1, 2 hydrogen atoms and 1 oxygen atom. Students, you can see that once we do that, we remain with carbon 4 oxide at this point and carbon 2 oxide at that point. So this will produce our two gases, carbon 4 oxide and carbon 2 oxide. What remains is now how to separate the two gases. So the mixture of the two gases will be produced from this end. Then we shall put our mixture through an alkali, a strong alkali. This alkali is to remove our carbon 4 oxide. And then we end up collecting only carbon 2 oxide on the far right. When it comes to the equation for the reaction, our oxalic acid or ethan dioic acid has the formula H2C2O4. If you dehydrate it using concentrated sulfuric 6 acid, as we have just seen up there, we get two gases, carbon 4 oxide, carbon 2 oxide, and water. So the moment we are able to separate the two, we shall then collect our carbon 2 oxide as shown by the setup. The last method you can use to obtain carbon 2 oxide is through reduction of carbon 4 oxide. Let's have a look at a setup that can reduce carbon 4 oxide to carbon 2 oxide. So the fourth and last method available for preparation of carbon 2 oxide is 
reduction of carbon four oxide using a suitable reducing agent. The common reducing agent is usually carbon in the form of charcoal. So we shall bring in our dry carbon four oxide, pass it over hot charcoal to reduce carbon four oxide to carbon two oxide. Now, chances are that not all carbon four oxide shall be reduced at this point. So we shall pass the products through sodium hydroxide to remove any unreacted carbon four oxide. And then we collect our carbon two oxide still over water at this point. We are through with the four available methods you can use to obtain carbon two oxide in a laboratory setup. Before we cross over to carbon four oxide, let's have a look at the uses of carbon two oxide. Carbon two oxide is mainly used as a reducing agent in extraction of not all metals but some metals from their ores. These metals are those that are either moderately reactive or not reactive. So in that category we have examples of iron or zinc. Carbon 2 oxide is also used in industry to manufacture methanol ethanoic acid and carbonyl chloride. These are industrial substances. And now to laboratory preparation of our second gas, carbon four oxide. Now, this gas can be prepared by action of a dilute acid on a carbonate but we are adding the word suitable to each because of some reason which we shall explain in a moment. Now, to obtain carbon oxide in the lab, most of the time we shall react carbon uh, calcium carbonate, which is commonly called marble chips, with dilute hydrochloric acid. The setup is as below. Dilute hydrochloric acid brought in through a dropping funnel. Here we have our calcium carbonate. We shall pass our gas through sodium hydrogen carbonate or someone can use water. This is to remove what we call acid sprays or traces of hydrogen chloride fumes that come out of the generator with the gas. Once we have removed our acid sprays, we shall dry the gas by passing through concentrated sulfuric six acid. And then we shall collect a dry sample by downward delivery. Carbon four oxide is actually denser than air. So, I want us to go back to our statement. We have used the word suitable dilute acid and suitable carbonate. So what happens is that any dilute acid will react with any carbonate to form carbon four oxide. However, the reaction will be unsuitable if the salt formed is insoluble or sparingly soluble in water. So in such cases, we shall see a reaction that starts but stops after some time due to formation of an insoluble coating which prevents further contact between the acid and the carbonate. So why we go for calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid is that the calcium chloride, the salt that is formed, is a soluble salt. So in the category of unsuitable combination, 
dilute sulfuric six acid may not be used with carbonates like barium carbonate, lead two carbonate, or calcium carbonate. This is due to formation of an insoluble salt, which we have said will form an insoluble coating and thus would prevent further contact between the acid and the carbonate. This makes the reaction to stop after some time. So back to our setup, the equation for the reaction would be calcium carbonate in solid form reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce calcium chloride, some carbon-4 oxide which we are interested in, and water. Of course, we shall balance with a 2 on hydrochloric acid. Calcium chloride has a 2 here. Now, we are ending our video by looking at the uses of carbon-4 oxide. Carbon-4 oxide has quite a number of uses. We have manufacture of carbonated drinks. Others call it aerated drinks. We also use carbon-4 oxide in refrigeration as dry ice. In fire extinguishing, we have carbon oxide featuring prominently in the solvay process during manufacture of sodium carbonate. We use it also in food preservation and we also use carbon oxide in cloud seeding. Up to that point, we are through with our short video where we have taken you through gases that are discussed at Form 2 Chemistry. We want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for being part of us 